This is Mark Bell from SuperTraining.tv, Super Training Gym, the strongest gym in the West, answering more questions today for the Power Project. We got a question from Andrew Davis off of Facebook, and he wants to know about stabilization. I posted a video of myself using the bamboo bar, bandel bar, I think it's called, or band bell bar. I can't even remember the name of it. But uh, you can purchase one off of westsidebarbell.com if you're interested. If you don't want to spend the money, if you don't want to get one, you can, you can. Uh, simply take kettlebells or even plates, 25-pound plates, something like that. Double up some mini bands. Get some mini bands or uh, even like a light band and uh, chuck them over the bar. You can, even, you can even loop some plates through like a chain or something like that. And uh, that will have some swinging effect. won't be nearly as effective as the bamboo bar, but, you know, you try to scrape together whatever you can sometimes. Um, <clears throat> let's see, what else can you use? You can also use a, P, a PVC pipe. Uh, however, those could be pretty dangerous because they might break. So uh, that might be something you want to look into. Uh, really, really high reps with uh, pretty uh, minimal weights. I'd say the PVC pipe can probably only hold about 100 pounds, maybe a little bit less. So about 40 or 50 pounds on each side if you're lucky. Um, <clears throat> but the uh, bamboo bar, <clears throat> um, the bamboo bar is superior because it's not going to break, and it can handle up to uh, nearly about 300 pounds, um, and that's a good limit because most people can't uh, even get up to those weights other than, like, Dave Hoff, who benches 965 in a full power meet, and uh, A.J. Roberts, who benched 905 in a full power meet. Uh, most people can't handle it, um, can't handle those types of weights on there. For myself, uh, I've gotten into that range before, but only for, you know, small amount of reps, 8 or 10 reps, something like that. Anyway, uh, I, use that, uh, I use that bar nearly every week or sometimes every other week, but I'd say I use it at least three or four times every month. Um, I do um, uh, usually high repetitions, uh, upwards of 20 reps, sometimes 40 reps or so. Um, I also uh, will do like three sets of 10 with it sometimes, or I'll simply go light, medium, heavy, kind of an old school bodybuilder approach to it. Light, medium, heavy, take the heaviest one. <clears throat> do as many reps as I can with it. Sometimes it's anywhere between 8 and 15 reps. And then I'll uh, drop the weight back down and uh, bust out some uh, higher repetitions. What is it for? What the hell is the thing for? <laughs> uh, it's one of those objects that uh, unless you've tried it, you really can't understand it. It's kind of hard to tell what it is. And you, can probably, you guys are probably thinking, well, <clears throat> you know, I know so-and-so. He benches big and he doesn't use it. You know, I, I know this guy, I know that guy, and he doesn't use it. But it's just another tool. It's another weapon against being weak. And um, what it's going to do for you is it's going to teach you how to bench press properly. It can also teach you how to bench press with your lats, if you can believe that or not. Um, but at the bottom of that uh, lift is where it gets the most unstable. And that's where most of us have most of our problems, is at the bottom of the bench press, where the leverages aren't great. And it's going to teach you to stay tight. As you always hear people say, it's going to teach you to keep your legs under you, have some leg drive. You hear that a lot, right? Leg drive. And it's going to teach you to fire the right muscles uh, as you're pushing. And I've told people many times before that that stupid bar, that bamboo bar, feels very similar to me uh, than uh, an 854 bench press and a shirt and a meat. Because <clears throat> the, uh, the instability and uh, the, uh, the way that you have to push against those big weights is, is quite strange. So... Uh, it, it mimics some of that for me, and if you're a raw lifter and if you're wondering if it's going to work, it's still going to have tremendous benefit for you as a raw lifter. Uh, it's going to work to stabilize their muscles. You hear people talk about it all the time, stabilize their muscles, and people are doing all kinds of weird uh, shit like hip bridges and, and uh, just stupid stuff, you know, stuff that's just, just basically, for lack of a better term, is absolutely retarded and asinine looking. I'm not a fan of talking about stabilizer muscles. Uh, I'm more of a fan of talking about getting underneath barbells and lifting heavy stuff. However, uh, sometimes it is important to address some of these uh, areas. And the bamboo bar kind of automatically works to stabilize your muscles without you sitting there going like this all day, which is just another ridiculous exercise. <laughs> um, but sometimes these things need to be addressed. If you're a, a tallish lifter, if you have long arms, uh, you better be taking care of your shoulders. You better be making sure that those shoulders are bulletproof. Rather than complain about having long arms, <laughs> build your arms up so they're big. Build your arms up so they're strong. Build your shoulders up so they're stable. Build everything up so you're solid as a rock and you can stop complaining about having uh, bad leverages in the bench press and you can stop whining about it. 
Um, <clears throat> I hear that way too often. Uh, what are some other stabilization type things that I do? Um, any sort of kettlebell pressing I like. Uh, you know, it's not extremely unstable, but it's quite different than pressing a, uh, a dumbbell or a barbell. The weights kind of rest uh, behind the wrist, and uh, that creates somewhat of an unstable environment. Um, what's some other crap I like to do? Oh, uh, with the uh, in regards to like the squat and the good mornings, um, I like doing a good morning with uh, with the kettlebells hooked up to mini bands as well. And I usually use that on the uh, cambered bar. You don't have a cambered bar, you can certainly use a straight bar. You can do squats that way as well. And again, it's going to be high repetition. You're trying to work ligament tendon strength, and um, you're working on your form. It's just a rehab prehab movement. So um, those are some other options. And then also uh, somebody asked a question, uh, you know, kind of how often am I doing these kinds of things? Uh, I do them as they come up. I do them as I feel they need to be addressed. Um, <clears throat> for example, if I take an 800-pound squat and I'm shaking all over the place, well, then I'll be like, okay, well, something needs to be done about that. So I'll incorporate some exercises that I feel are going to help. There's really no science behind it. There's nothing behind it other than just me thinking about it, saying, you know what? Uh, that was a crappy squat. I need to stabilize that thing better. What are some things I can do? And if you think about it, when you do a squat, you kind of have a static contraction of your uh, abdominal region, of your, core, of your core, so to speak. So why not pick exercises that are going to um, uh, get a response from that kind of thing, get a response from your core. So you can do exercises such as zercher squats, where you're trying to hold the weight at the top for a period of time, or even throw some kettlebells on the bar with some bands. Again, creating uh, more instability and doing some zercher squats like that, where the, where the bands and everything's kind of shaking all around and you're moving all around like crazy. Um, movements like that would be really good for you. Um, some other movements I do, planks with chains. Get on the floor, do a plank. I like to do the plank into foam, have the elbows resting in, on some sort of foam. That way you can kind of press into it. Sometimes have the feet on foam too. You could press your feet and your forearms into the, into the ground. Um, and uh, have someone throw a bunch of chains on your back till you get up to about 120, 150 pounds of chains on your back. Hold that puppy for 30 seconds and see how you feel. Talk about working your stabilizer muscles. Jeez. And uh, we also got a new exercise at, uh, at uh, Super Training Gym that I'll share with you guys soon. It's a one-arm pull-down ab movement that was invented by Mr. Robot Pants. Speaking of Mr. Robot Pants, Mr. Robot Pants has a great quote that I can end this whole topic with when talking about the stabilizer muscles. He once told me, Mr. Robot Pants, he actually said this to me in the gym. He said, my shoulders are so stable, there are horses living in them. And that is it from supertraining.tv. Later.